So I am absolutely fascinated. Um, parenting has been one of my greatest joys and just, you know, watching your generation. I have a 23 and 21 and 18 and 16 year old. And so I, I, I've been right in there and yeah. watching what you guys have gone through, um, you know, through COVID, you know, through the educational system. There are just so many things that I when I look out, I go, I see amazing stories, which is why I started um, Be Better Media. Yeah. But I also see so in so many situations how the deck is kind of stacked against the mindset of your generation, right? With the, yeah. with the conventional news and the stories that are being told, the current narrative really doesn't stack up to, you know, what what we're capable of. And you're you're showing that through all of the, you know, the innovation and the the racing and the business and all of the things that you've done at such a young age. So what do you think um, through your experience and your coaching are, are some of the greatest challenges that your generation is facing that we can work on together? I think you, you definitely said it like with uh, the news and everything and just all these different agendas being pushed out there, which to be honest, I, when COVID first started, I think that's when all of this craziness started as well. Like all of these agendas started getting pushed heavily and I didn't experience that because as soon as COVID happened, every uh, schools went online and then my family decided, Hey, let's homeschool because this is all a mess anyway. Let's homeschool. And we were thinking about it for a long time. Um, so that was kind of just our push and push over the edge to do it. And then we started living at training facilities and these training facilities are literally out in basically the middle of nowhere. You're, you're training every single day with other motocrossers. And there was none of the, like, there was no COVID masks, none of this stuff. And I would talk to my friends who were back at school and they would tell me all this crazy stuff that was happening. Like you had to wear masks in school. I, I was told that there was all of these TikTok challenges that people were doing that were absolutely stupid, like going up and hitting your teacher or going into the back. My friends even told me there was a thing at the school I went to where people were actually going in and stealing the sinks, mirrors, toilets out of the bathroom. And it was like a challenge. And I was sitting there at a training facility trying to train for a national race, sitting here like, there's no way this is actually happening. Like that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like what is wrong with people? And it all really started during COVID. And I was lucky enough to not really experience that firsthand. But hearing about it, I was like, oh, my gosh. And then lately, it's just been getting more and more all these new agendas and all this stuff. So I think it's really just coming down to my generation. Just first of all, seeing what what's like the actual source of all of this, you know, and what is the purpose behind it? Because I can tell you one thing from my travels to like South Africa and everything. And my business partner, he's very worldly. Like he lives in Dubai. At sometimes he lives in the UK, South Africa. He's in Cape Town right now. So when him and I are hanging out, we're obviously talking about all this stuff. And then a lot of people who I talk to, they're also very worldly. A lot of this stuff, as much as I hate to say it, is America stuff. Like this is stuff that's happening in America, like these agendas and all this news. That's American. Like none of this stuff is really happening in other areas of the world. And I just look at it and I'm like, why is that? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, this is crazy which I don't have an answer to why, like why America is pushing all these agendas and things like that. But it is interesting that when I go over there, none of that is happening. Like I immediately can notice things and even how people are dressing. They're like, I, I don't mean to like judge anybody, but just like how they're dressing, their hair color, like all this stuff. I immediately noticed that when I got back to the US, literally just like three months ago after spending three months in Cape Town, I was like, well, I'm back to the US, like that's for sure. So it's just, it is it is very interesting, but I've kind of one thing I'm grateful for with the travels and stuff is and the motocross everything is I've got a really big contrast because I've seen a lot of the different sides of things. So whereas some people, which I think this is probably one of the problems, is my generation they're only seeing this one thing and they're seeing the one agenda or the news or whatever it is that's being pushed, and that's the only thing they're seeing. So they have nothing to compare it to. Whereas I am comparing it to. When I go to Cape Town, everybody's acting normal and there's not all this craziness. I can, I'm like, what is happening? Like, what is wrong? Why are people doing pushing this stuff? 
Yeah, I mean, that you hit on a huge point there. I feel like there's so much in the current narrative that's pushing people into their silos, right? And and we only get to see what we agree with. And the more we agree with that thing, you know, whether it's the clickbait and the social media, it all sends us down the one certain rabbit hole rather than seeing the diversity, yeah. your diversity, and really believing that each part has you know, everyone's adding something as long as you're not hurting somebody, right? Rather than yeah. being offended by one point of view and then blocking it out. And that's a really interesting point. I, I don't know how you feel, if, you know, about advice you could give to um, to anybody, really, not just your generation, but just of, of how to be more open-minded and and seek out that diversity, whether you're traveling or not. You know, how can people learn to not be so offended by things that are going on in the world and just be, be more open to learning? Well, in terms of being offended, like people need to start focusing on themselves more versus worrying about other things. Because if they were focused on building themselves up physically, mentally, everything, they're not going to care about this stuff. I don't care about any agenda. I don't care what you want to do, what you believe in, what your religion is, what your gender is. I don't care. I'm focused on like building myself and getting better every day. I could care less what you want to do with your life. That's yours. Like, I'm not going to give my opinion on it. Like, I don't care. And if people just did that and focused on themselves, I'd be, I think that'd be a bit thing, but I can't believe I didn't mention it before, but you said it, which is social media. That's another thing is paying attention to who you're following and listening to on there and how much time you spend on it. Like the only people that I follow on there are people where, you, I can learn from them. And actually the point of people also get social media wrong, I feel like. And, uh, was it, I think it was Ed Sheeran who said this in a, in an interview or something. And I was like, that is so, so true. And that's what I use social media for is he said, social media is a promotional tool. Like he, if you go, he said how, if you go to his page, the only things he's posting, he's not posting selfies and this stuff. He's posting his music and it's an advertising tool and it's a tool to promote yourself, build your business, your personal brand, whatever it is, not the selfies and all these things. And a point that he brought up is a lot of these people who are posting the selfies or posting this stuff, and especially the fake things, like trying to fake that they look better than they are and all these things, is because they don't have a very strong confidence in themselves. They don't have a very good self view of themselves. So they are seeking the the like positive opinion or whatever of their friends and other people. Like, for example, if you go to any high school girl's Instagram post, you will see a gazillion comments of, oh, my God, you're stunning. Oh, my God, you're beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow. Like all these things. And I'm sitting here like, oh, my God, like it it doesn't drive me crazy. I just find it kind of funny. And Ed Sheeran hit on that, which is a lot of these people posting that stuff. That's what they're seeking is this like outside outside thing that's going to bring them value. Whereas if they focus instead of doing that and caring what other people thought, and they simply just looked at themselves as like, okay, how can I get better? How can I feel better about myself? You know, like if they look in the mirror and they don't like what they see, well, then you can fix that. And then you'll feel better about yourself. And when you feel better about yourself and you're confident, then you're not going to care about what the agenda is or all these other people and all this stuff. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. One of my favorite um, sports psychologists is coming out with a book. I don't know if you know Michael Gervais um, or any of his work, but he, he, his it's, so. it's called The First Rule of Mastery. You would love his podcast. Um, and yeah. he's uh, he, he's amazing. But his, it's called The First Rule of Mastery. And that first rule of mastery is, is, is overcoming the fear of what other people think of you. And that's yeah. what his... This book's being put out by Harvest, Harvard Business Review, and that concept, you know, it's it's incredibly hard for most people all throughout their life, but I think it's even harder, you know, when you're constantly looking at social media and looking for that external oh, yeah. information, you know, and I think a huge part of that, and I love seeing it through your story, is just really delving into what your purpose is in life, right? F taking the time to figure out what is your purpose? Why am I here? And yeah. it's hard when you're just scrolling and looking what other people are doing. There is there is a lot of wisdom out there and oh, it's yeah. great to follow it and, and gather it. 
but then figuring out how it applies to your life and your purpose. That's like, that's the internal work, right? Can you describe to me more specifically, like what that internal work looks like as you have figured out, you know, your path and in stopping motocross and, and starting your business and going down this path at such a young age, what's that internal work look like for you? 